Hello and welcome to Think Watercolour. Uh, today's demonstration is about how I painted this simple farmhouse scene uh, and how it fits some bas basic principles of um, composition. The vertical line of the three pine trees intersects neatly with the horizontal line of the buildings to create a nice asymmetrical L-shaped layout based on the rule of thirds with the focal point at the base of the trees. And to draw the viewer's eye into the painting there are converging diagonals leading to the distant hills for which I used a lighter and cooler tonal value to create depth. Basically like colours uh, tend to recede and darker tones appear closer. So let's get started. I have uh, loosely sketched the scene out on a sheet of Saunders Waterford 300 gram rough paper and I'm going to start with the sky. This is cerulean blue and a touch of cobalt blue for the blue part of the sky and I'm just adding some clean water to the left hand side uh, for it to uh, appear a little bit misty. This is um, ostensibly a morning seen in the winter where, where the sun is quite low and I, I wanted to depict uh, light coming from the left and having some shadows on the fields and some of the buildings in a little bit of shadow. And I've just added some purple to the sky mix for the grey of the shadow on the clouds. Uh, just putting it in. This is wet on dry paper so I have a little bit of control and damp and softening the edges with a with a damp uh, clean brush. The trick with clouds is not to overwork them; just keep it simple. Uh, this will dry a little bit lighter, but um, it should look fine. Uh, I'm using the same mix for the farm track. Uh, I'm going to uh, indicate some puddles in the track uh, as we go along. I'm just adding a little bit of sepia in there just for the, uh, the gravelly area of the track. I'm just using the same shadow mix for the clouds on the this side of the buildings. There, as I said, the sun is coming just over from the left, quite low. So they're in a bit of shadow, but not uh, not a really dark shadow, just in the shade, really. The farmhouse itself is white, and the the barn to the right of it has a white door, and uh, it's going to be uh, stone. So uh, I'll be painting that in a different colour shortly. This is. A mix of lemon yellow with a touch of jadeite green for the lightest lights on the uh, field nearest to us and I'll, I'll put some on the background as well but um, mainly it's for the lights on this side of things. And I've just added a little bit more fairly neat jadeite green wet into wet. Uh, this is the uh, first wash so everything's going to be very loose and soft edged. As I add more detail it'll get darker and darker. just want to put in some shadows on that uh, foreground slope so I'm just using a little bit of uh, burnt, burnt uh, sienna as well just to, just to depict some, some edges and uh, darker areas on that slope. Just mix some um, alizarin crimson with some jadeite green to darken it. It's always a good idea to use complementary colours, darken co colours. So with green you would use a, a red, in this case alizarin crimson. It makes quite a nice dark green. But it's very wet and wet so it's not going to be that dark to start with. Uh, this is a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna to create a nice grey for the roof tiles on the building. 
or buildings I should say. I'll come back and darken some of the shadows a bit later. Just putting a little bit of shadowing along the edge of that uh, pathway there, or, or farm track I should say. For the distant hills I've just used some jadeite green with a touch of uh, cobalt blue, very very pale, to create that uh, distant look. As I said earlier, lighter, cooler colours tend to recede. Just putting some uh, shadowing area on the, um, the doors and windows of the uh, farm building. For the building I'm using yellow ochre with a touch of burnt sienna. Just varying the, uh, the tonal values so that it's not, not one flat colour. Just putting a little bit more shading on the buildings just to help uh, give them some definition. Just to create some uh, definition in those um, hills that are a little bit closer to us, just using the same mix I used for the background hills on top of the initial wash, just darkens it in a few areas and creates some shadows and nothing too specific. Again, this is jadeite green with some alizarin and crimson just to darken it a little bit. Just to start creating some shadows on this, uh, these hills at this slope rather that's closer to us, just in front of the farmhouse and the, uh, and the barn. Painting's reaching the, uh, the ugly stage now where nothing seems to come together, but uh, trust me, it will, it will all come together. Just darken that green a little bit with some more uh, alizarin and crimson just to uh, vary the tonal value of those shadows on that slope. Just using the side of the brush now just to drop in some local colour and darken that uh, far shadow in front of the barn. This is all going to dry a little bit lighter so uh, it'll all come together eventually. As I say at this, at this stage it looks a little bit ugly but uh, most watercolours go through an ugly stage at some point. A lot of artists give up when they reach this stage, I think they've made a mess, but um, it will all come together. I've just got a number three rigger here and I'm just using that uh, grey mix just to uh, use the texture of the paper to pick up uh, some, uh, some colour for the, uh, the wintry trees behind the, the farmhouse and the, st and the uh, barn. Just darkening the mix a little bit with some uh, jadeite green and alizarin and crimson just to uh, Make it a uh, slightly darker grey for the pine trees. They're silhouetted so uh, you don't see a lot of colour. It's, um, it's against, against a fairly bright sky so they will look uh, greyish black in silhouette. Again, 
again using the side of this number three rigger this is uh, burnt sienna neat burnt sienna just dropping it in to vary the uh, the color in this foreground there's a lot of sh uh, shrubbery and all sorts growing up on this uh, it's just a rough pasture field making sure that the um, the tonal value nearest to us is darker and warmer warmer cut warmer and darker colors come towards you again just using the side of the rigger just to pick up the texture of the paper adding a little bit more detail in the foreground nearest to us you see more detail close up and as things get further away it's less defined I'm just using some darker green here just for a bit of variety in the uh, in the plants that are growing in this field and as I put these darker colors in the uh, the painting starts to take a little bit more form This is uh, just pure sepia for these trees. Again, as I say, they're in uh, in silhouette, so they're they're almost black. But um, dark sepia mix uh, will do the trick. Just strengthening them at the base there. I switch to a number zero rigger for the branches at the top of these pines. A little bit thinner, so uh, using a, a small brush. I always find riggers are ideal for doing this sort of uh, work. You could use a dagger brush, but I prefer riggers. The trick we're doing these pines is to just suggest what's there, not uh, not be too pedantic about detail. Just adding some undergrowth at the base of the trees, otherwise they would look like they're floating. Uh, just using the same mix, just to put uh, with the, that number zero rig, just to indicate a few branches in those trees behind the farmhouse. Nothing too specific. And now I'm just adding some shadows, darker shadows under the eaves of those roofs. It just brings the painting together. And just down the side of the uh, the farmhouse, I just want to make sure that uh, I leave a little bit of light showing at the top of the barn. It helps define the uh, the shape of the building. Again, using the side of the rigger with these darks, it just brings the painting together. The minute you start putting the the darkest darks in, the whole thing stops being ugly and becomes, becomes the painting that you want it to be. Just a little bit more detail on the building just to uh, help define them a little bit better. As you can see, I've worked from the lightest lights towards the darkest darks. And uh, if you do that with watercolour, you can't really go wrong. 
just pulling the gate and the fencing in at the end of that uh, farm track just finishes the painting off really and there's a tree just to the right of the barn that I've got to put in again just using a very strong mix of uh, jadeite green with a touch of uh, alizarin crimson to darken it this is an evergreen tree Just putting a few final touches in on shadows along that uh, the edge of that uh, track in the foreground on the right. Just defining the top of that uh, hill there. There's a there's a hedge, so just uh, put that in with the darker green, and I think we're done. Thank you so much for watching this uh, short demonstration. Uh, I hope you found it of interest um, and if you enjoyed it do give it a like, it always helps with YouTube. Uh, do subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos that are coming up in the next few weeks and thanks again for watching.